So I have some mixed feelings on this next story here. Democrats exclude Fox News from hosting 2020 primary debates, saying claims of the network having an inappropriate relationship with Trump mean it cannot be neutral. The Democratic Party is excluding Fox News from hosting any of its primary debates in the 2019-2020 cycle. This is from the Daily Mail, by the way. Democrats claim has an inappropriate relationship with President Donald Trump's administration cannot be neutral. The network is not in a position to host a fair and neutral debate for our candidates, Democratic National Committee Chairman Tom Perez said. Fox News said it hoped the DNC would reconsider the decision and name some of its highly regarded political correspondents in its response. Quote, we hope the DNC will reconsider its decision to bar to bar Chris Wallace, Brett Baer, and Martha McCallum, all of whom enjoy journalistic integrity and professionalism for moderating a, a Democratic presidential debate. Um, Fox News Senior Vice President Bill Salmon said in a statement. So, um... I do have mixed feelings about this. I'm going to get to them in a second. But first, let me tell you what Trump said in response to this. He went on Twitter and he said, quote, Democrats just blocked Fox News from holding a debate. Good. Then I think I'll do the same thing with the fake news networks and the radical left Democrats in the general election debates. See, Trump thinks every network that's critical of him, though, is fake news. And he would honestly bar CNN, MSNBC... Um, NBC, CBS, ABC, I'm not sure there'd be anybody left. He would say only Fox is good, and then the Democrats would say not Fox, so then there's nowhere to go. So there wouldn't be debates. So um, here's why I have mixed feelings on the Democrats' choice. Because on the one hand, just go in there and uh, pull no punches and just kind of smack them around. Smack around Fox News, put them in their place, and just, you know, own shit, run shit, walk in there and go, we know what this is, we know what you are, and so, you know, watch us do our thing, and just take no prisoners, and be crystal clear with, uh, you know, what these candidates are fighting for, and all that fun stuff, in a weird way, it might, it might even become like every candidate on stage versus this obvious propaganda network, and it would potentially be entertaining, now that's, one part of me says that, the other part of me says this, Fox News, I think, is objectively illegitimate. They're not honest actors. They are just a rank propaganda network. They're so outside of the spectrum of that which is acceptable and, and decent that it does, in a way, legitimize them if you say, yeah, sure, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll appear on your network. It's... It's a little bit like, you know, when Bill Nye, the science guy, debated Ken Ham, the creationist. One school of thought was, now you've set it up as if it's a 50-50 proposition, as if it's something that is debatable. When this guy's saying fucking humans rode dinosaurs in the world 6,000 years old, which is just so insanely wrong that it's laughable, and this guy's saying, hey, evolution is a thing that happened, which is just true. So there's a problem when you set up a proposition as if it's 50-50 because then people will walk away from it going, I don't know, maybe this, maybe that. And, uh, you know, they almost all the networks do this with climate change, for example. They have on some right-wing hack who's funded by ExxonMobil and then they have on an actual climate scientist. The climate scientist is like, okay, climate change is real. And then the, oh, the paid hack is like, no, there's still a debate. Did Exxon cut the check yet? So that... It's almost dishonest by definition because of how it's framed. You're giving people an escape route where they go, oh no, it, it's 50-50 because they just put it forward as 50-50. They debated that which is not debatable and that does a disservice to everybody in the audience because it makes them think it's debatable. So by the same token, if you treat Fox like a news network, you're saying it's a news network. It is... To be on with them is us legitimizing them and saying, yes, you are on, on par with actual news networks, and they're just not. So I see both sides of this because, listen, I've been on Fox News twice, and I went on knowing what they are, uh, and, you know, I, I held my ground and argued my position, and I tried to my best to convince people in the audience who would otherwise not like me and not like leftism, and I tried to frame the debate from their perspective. So I definitely see 
the other side as well, which is just, it doesn't matter. Go in there and run shit, and then, who knows? Maybe if you do a good enough job, even if you chip away at 5% of that audience, 95% is going to hate you no matter what, but did you chip away at 5% and maybe make them like you? It's certainly possible. We just saw the other day, Tulsi Gabbard went on Tucker Carlson's show, and the entire time they spoke about foreign policy, Tulsi made a relentless left-wing case for non-interventionism. Not only did Tucker Carlson agree... But the audience, when you read uh, on YouTube the comments, it was, I'm a right-winger, but I love Tulsi Gabbard. I'm a Republican, but Tulsi Gabbard's right about foreign policy. And that has nothing but a positive effect. Since when did it become a bad thing to make people who would otherwise disagree with you agree with you? Not only is that not a bad thing, that's an amazingly positive thing, because then we're moving closer to actually getting action to get the right positions implemented. So, I see both sides of that. Um, I understand what the DNC is doing here, 100%. But I also think that there's something to be said about just going in there, running shit, and seeing what happens. And just keep everything in perspective as you do it. Now, um, the other point is, the specific people that they chose to moderate it aren't that bad. Chris Wallace, not that bad. Brett Baer, not that bad. Um, Martha McCallum's terrible. So, you know, another thing the DNC could do is say, all right, listen, here are our demands. You want to have a debate? Here are our demands. Chris Walls is fine. Brett Baer is fine. Get rid of Martha McCallum, who's a joke, um, and bring, for example, the person whose show I was on. It was called, like, American, American, American Newsroom or something like that. But the host was a guy named Leland Vittert. Um, I was on twice, and he struck me. Even though he did, he asked many hard questions. I think one of the framing, one of the framings of one of the questions was dishonest, but that's just one. Most of the questions he asked me, I actually think were were really good and were substantive. And there were times where he conceded my points, like when I said, you know, hey, Donald Trump ran against NAFTA. Donald Trump ran against the wars, so I wish he would do those things. Leland was like, you know, you have a good point there. And I was like, whoa, this Fox News host. So he's not a hack. So why not have a guy like Leland Vittert come on and, and you know, be the third person to question because he's just better at this shit than Martha McCallum, who's a fucking hack far-right winger. And there are other ones, too. So Chris Wallace, not horrendous. Brett Baer, not horrendous. Some people would say Shep Smith is not horrendous. I think he's not that good in a, in a, in a different way. He's not as bad, obviously, as, like, Sean Hannity, but he's not great. I think I'd rather have Leland Vittert than... Uh, Shep Smith, but maybe there's another one I'm missing. There's Chris Wallace, Brett Bear, and I'm sure there's maybe one other Fox host who's not, like, the worst. So, yeah, just have, if the DNC makes demands, hey, here are, the thing, here are the hosts that we're cool with, then that's fine. But then, you know, all of us will be pissed when Im immediately there's questions about, like, Bernie Sanders, why do you want the U.S. to turn into Venezuela? Why do you want people to die when they go to get health care? Because there is going to be a lot of that. I think even with the hosts that aren't terrible, they will ask some horrendously terrible questions. So, Anyway, mixed feelings on this, obviously, as I just laid out in, in fine detail for you. And listen, this is something I, you know, things I struggle with personally as well. I, part of me feels like, hey, who am I going to debate, talk to, whatever? Some of the people are so beyond the pale that it's like, like, would I ever debate Richard Spencer? No, because that, again, that legitimizes the idea of, oh, sure, people who aren't the same uh, race or ethnicity as you are subhuman. And that framing itself is unfair and dumb and wrong and egregious and pathetic. So no, I'm not going to pretend like something's 50-50 when it's like 100-0, okay? But then it's like, okay, how far do I go with that? Where is the line? What is the line? Because a guy like Ben Shapiro is horrendously wrong about a zillion things and, you know, wrote articles like, here's why the Iraq war is right for America and awesome. Here's why I don't care about civilian casualties. Here's why, to be fair, he, he backpedaled from that latter one. Um, but, you know, there's like a million things we could point to with Ben Shapiro, things he said that are just like, are you can't be that dumb. Like, are you seriously that dumb? Pretending like there's, there's not corruption in Washington, D.C. I'm not kidding. We just covered that segment, what, a month ago? Not even. Um, where he pretends like, <laughs> it's not like, you know, big money controls these politicians and they do what their donors want. So, he's beyond the pale in so many ways, but then I did say, the, at the last Politicon, I said, yeah, I'll debate him. So, where is that line? 
There, there's obviously a line somewhere, but where is that line? And then what's your logic? What's your reasoning? And, you know, how can you back up that position? By the same token, it's like I would never debate a fucking jihadist because I think that they're so insanely off base that what's the point? I'm not going to debate a creationist. They're so insanely off base. What's the point? But I, you know, I should be willing to engage with people who massively disagree with me and say a hell of a lot of insane things, but it would still make sense because they've gained such a giant following, somebody like Ben Shapiro. And it's a thing that people struggle with when they're in these spaces. Where is the line? Why is the line there? And, and what makes sense? And I think what I've defaulted to is kind of, I've kind of fallen back on, all right, I'm just going to kind of listen more to you guys in that. I know that you're, you lean more on the side of just fucking do it, you know, just do it, just debate this person or that person. And I've tried to lean more on that. And I try to, you know, with Politicon, that's the main reason why I decided last time, yeah, I'll go to Politicon is because I know you guys like seeing me debate. So I said, fuck it. Okay, fine. I'll do it. And then I went there. I went on a bunch of panels. It was fun and whatnot. But that's become more my default setting is, okay, I'll just give you guys what you want. Even if I don't agree that, you know, it it's fruitful to talk to X person because some of these people who we're dealing with on the right, honestly, are just smear merchants and liars. They really are. And they don't really believe anything they're saying. They're just playing a role. But if it's something that you guys get something out of, and if it's something maybe even more importantly that maybe somebody will stumble across, some random 16-year-old kid who's just getting into politics and then they stumble across a video of me or, or somebody like me setting somebody straight when they say something horrendously wrong in terms of politics or policy, well, then that's a net positive in the world, and that's something we should probably go for. But uh, either way, I have mixed feelings about um, what Tom Perez and the DNC did here. I see where they're coming from, but I don't know. I'll be curious to see what all you guys think of what they did.